Well, aloha everyone. Dan Herwood, Dan Herwood Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope during your subscription today, I am here on the big island of Hawaii at the Green Sand Beach. I recently did a full video on the Green Sand Beach and I said I would do a separate video on the geology that creates this. So this video is all about the geology that creates this crazy, you know, unique green beach on the island of Hawaii. So wish me luck and I hope you enjoy. Now, if you want to see everything else about the Green Sand Beach here, go back and check out the previous video. This is just about the unique set of circumstances in the geology of this part of Hawaii that created this beach here. And why peridot is one of the few things that can do something like this. Peridot is what the green sand is. Now, as you know, Hawaii is a great big volcano, and the big island of Hawaii is a currently active volcano. It's actually a couple different volcanoes, but yeah, whatever, we'll just say one. Interesting fact of the day, the big island of Hawaii is one of the largest mountains in the world. If you measure from the seafloor up to its peak, it is freaking huge. But that's not what this video is about. This video is about why the geology of this volcano has created a beach that is full of the gemstone peridot. Peridot is formed deep in the crust, way down, way, way down. Nowhere near the surface where peridot's formed. And the only way that peridot gets to the surface for us to find it is through volcanic action. You know, uh, it's kind of similar to diamonds. Diamonds were only ever uh, created way down deep in the earth other than man-made ones, of course, but way down deep in the earth. The only way that we actually get diamonds is finding these great big old ancient volcanoes that blew them out of the core of the earth and up to the surface. Maybe not the core, but down deep. This is very similar. Peridot is formed way down there, and it takes a volcano to blow it up to the surface. Now, we find peridot in my neck of the woods, too. You may have seen my videos on peridot, where it is, you know, in these what we call nests, these big balls of green that are, you know, hardened in volcanic columns. Well, that's slightly different because that's magma underneath the surface hardening and then slowly eroding up to the surface. Here, the peridot we find on the Big Island of Hawaii is all fresh volcanics that's come out as lava, or in this case, as a great big ash explosion, and uh, dumped it on the surface. Most of the volcanic action on Hawaii is, you know, what you think of when you, when you see on TV news articles, you know, splattering lava, flowing lava, maybe crumbly lava flowing down the slope. But you're, you typically think of lava when you think of volcanic action on the Hawaiian Islands. This here, that is ash. Ash is different than lava in a big way. Volcanic ash is not like wood ash. It's not carbon. It's actually microscopic little pieces of rock. Volcanic ash is blown up into the air from these volcanoes. And it takes a special type of volcano to actually blow ash up into the air. So a typical uh, Hawaiian volcano, you know, has lava spewing around, is not creating all that much ash. Yet that is a freaking huge amount of ash. There are two main ways that so much ash can end up in one spot like big explosion far far away or a series of small ones close by so the first possibility is sometime back in history one of the eruptions of mount mauna loa the volcano that makes up hawaii was a different type of eruption and instead of it spewing a bit of lava flowing a bit of lava pressure built up underneath more and more and more pressure built up underneath and eventually it exploded and what it is, is the, the lava underneath there, it melts and heats up and heats up. And as it's heating, it gets to this sort of super critical temperature, this temperature and pressure where it wants to start to off gas. It wants to start to vaporize some rock. It wants to actually, you know, let off pressure. But the big mountains on top of the volcano are holding that pressure in. And if that equilibrium starts to form, it doesn't have vents that start letting off pressure. If that equilibrium starts to form and starts building, the top pushing down, the bottom pushing up, it actually creates a situation 
where enough of that magma wants to off gas, wants to actually vaporize itself underneath, but it can't because of the pressure on top and it builds and it builds and it builds and it wants to off gas, but it can't. Eventually something gives, a crack in the earth, some, something just finally breaks, whatever it might be. And all of a sudden the cap on top is no longer creating all that pressure to hold down that magma. It loses some pressure, and as soon as it loses a little bit of pressure down there, all of that liquid that wants to become vapor gets a chance to. And all at once, it vaporizes and makes one massive explosion. Don't think, you know, Hawaiian volcano explosion. Think Pompeii-type explosion. Kaboom! It blows its top off. All of that material that was at a point hot enough that it could vaporize does all at once. It creates these huge clouds of basically vaporized rock. And that vaporized rock goes up into the atmosphere, cools as little tiny rock fragments, and settles as volcanic ash. Typically doesn't happen on the Hawaiian islands. Now, when it explodes like that, some minerals like olivine or peridot are still in their mineral form. They can take the heat and pressure, they can take the violent eruption, and they stay as their crystal form and get blown up into the sky as still rock doesn't vaporize. Those bigger pieces of sand and pebbles will drop closer to the volcano where the finer ash, the finer particles, will blow away, will blow off into the sea where the bigger particles, like making up this ash bed right here, will drop close by, like that. And we're on the edge of the volcano right now. Now, peridot is in that ash as little tiny grains. It falls out first closer because it's heavy, it's not that fine ash, but it's still up there as it's little tiny grains because peridot is extremely resistant to heat. And when it blows up into the air like that, those heavier particles like the peridot and maybe some bigger pieces of basalt all fall at once. And it sort of falls in a gradient of heaviest stuff falling first, lightest stuff falling farther away. And where we are on the gradient right here is where all of the olivine fell in that block. Now another more likely theory is that rather than one big event, this block series of small but very hot eruptions from one of the many, many side vents or cinder cones around the slopes of the big volcano. An exceptionally hot channel of magma can create a lot of olivine from deep in the mantle, create a cinder cone close by, and after many smaller explosive events, was able to lay down this very large ash bluff in this one localized area few hundred thousand if not million years later that bluff starts to get eroded by the ocean the ocean comes in erodes that bluff dropping the peridot into the water and then the wave action will slowly push the heavier material like peridot farther up out of the water the lighter material like basalt and the volcanic ash gets pulled out into the ocean and goes away and it creates that situation where we're separating by density, basically, the peridot out of the general volcanic ash. That is a mixture of everything. That is basalt, that's ash, that's everything, including the peridot. Down here on the beach is basically just the peridot. And that wave action concentrates the peridot near the top, and it takes the basalts, the heavier basalts, and drops them down at the water. That's why down at the water's edge is black, and the light stuff like the ash just goes away. So we got green fading to black, fading to, you know, ash out in the ocean. Very interesting geology that creates basalt in ash beds like this. And of course, there's also basalt around here, I'm not sure where I put it, that is in the magma itself, the magma turning to lava on the surface. And uh, there is basalt in that as well, but that's not contributing to this beach. It does contribute to other peridot around, but this beach is the ash. And I'm not sure if that is just an ash bed where it all settled, or if that was like a pyroclastic flow from the volcano itself that flowed down the hill and settled there. Looking at those layers, it's either multiple flows or multiple, you know, explosion events. 
that made the layers of that ash. I know that's a pretty big geology lesson. Usually my geology lessons are down to one minute. That would probably took me 10, but there you go. Geology lesson of the day, why peridot can concentrate on a beach like this. There's four of them in the world, four green beaches like this where peridot is concentrated and why it happens. Now I do have to give the disclaimer here that this is a very oversimplified uh, version of this concept designed to give you the overall concept, not necessarily the nitty gritty facts along the way. Yes, some of those facts might not be exactly right, but I think this is good enough to give you the concept of why this beach is here and what kind of geology creates it. you enjoyed my video if you did please leave me that thumbs up if i haven't earned your subscription already i hope i earned your subscription today and a big thanks to everyone for watching especially my patrons because the support of my patrons i get to make these weekly episodes of dan herd prospecting and you know because i'm in hawaii mahalo and aloha <laughs>